We've learned a little bit about what happens on our landing pages, and you know you're doing this. You're adding that, like this page, find us in Facebook, tweet about us on the landing page. Think a moment about that. Do you want, when somebody's coming to a landing page and you're asking them to fill out a form, you're asking them to buy something from you, do you really want to be sending them off to Mark Zuckerberg to uh, see the wedding photos, find out about their Aunt Judy, what their kids are doing in school? Probably not, but you know you're doing it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take what Janet taught us about social media landing pages, about Facebook landing pages in specific, and we're going to talk about how to turn them back into something that we can use to drive our businesses forward. And uh, from a conversion standpoint, we're particularly partial to new leads, new customers, people who are buying stuff, people who are doing the stuff that will grow our businesses. So let's take a look at that. We're going to cook a little moonshine to turn the mash of people that are in our social networks and in our, in our social networks into something more valuable. And um, if you like moonshine, you'll consider that valuable. So here's the, here's the strategy. And incidentally, these, these, we're, we're using social media because it's a pretty complex, difficult to measure, organic channel. But you can use some of these same techniques on your email campaigns, on your PPC campaigns. We'll talk about that. So what you need is a little content. You've got your social network, the people, they're your mash, your whiskey mash that you're going to use to distill the alcohol out of. You want to add a little heat, and that's your content. You want to drive the vapors into social landing pages, and then you want to distill those out and get those landing pages to convert them into leads, sales, subscribers, again, whatever moves business forward, right? So first of all, we're going to talk about the still. Here's an example from Facebook. This is Zappos. So this is their content. This is the stuff they're posting to their wall, and it is filtering out into the news feeds of their friends and their friends of friends. Uh, here's a pretty straightforward um, promotion with video. Here's a little bit of uh, personal commentary video. These, by the way, video is converting awesome. If you have um, any penchant for adding video to your mix in almost any industry, do so, please. Uh, and here's a little bit more of a straight, hey, it's like us if it's Friday. In all these cases, the thing that's going to get them back to their page is, unfortunately, this little link here. So people have got to click on Zappos.com. They're going to come to a social media landing page. Now, Janet already talked about how the reveal works. In this case, they have a nice big arrow saying, like us. When you click like, you get the uh, reveal content. This could be a complete store, as Janet said. In this case, it is a teaser because they're bringing you back to their website. And this is where they believe they're going to have the best chance of converting those Facebook folks into buyers. So we've taken a strategy of being a good social media partner, and we've created a distillation all the way through to buying. So there's a couple ways to look at this. You can do it on network. Again, as Janet said, if you advertise in Facebook, drive them to a Facebook page for best results. Uh, and this, war this is the true on any other networks that are offering advertising opportunities. Facebook, obviously, is the biggest right now. So the advantage of staying in network is that there's higher trust. I'm there with all my friends. I'm in Facebook. You're in Facebook. There's all the social proof laying around. So you can generate pr uh, trust, and that's going to improve your conversion rates. Built-in engagement tools are all there, so I can share, I can like, I can post pictures, I can add videos, all provided by Facebook and these other social networks for you, so you don't have to build those on your site. Nice. The, unfortunately, there's a lot of distractions, and when we're building landing pages in a traditional web scenario, our goal is to strip away all the distractions we can. We don't want more than one offer if we can help it, and we even recommend stripping off your site-wide navigation. So that when someone's in the question about a particular um, white paper that they want to sign up for or want to buy a particular product, you don't want them going off and learning about you and product and services. Because people, when they're in that point of making a decision to give you information or to buy something, they're just looking for excuses to delay the decision. So social networks are horrible for this. There's ads and all that other stuff. And there's less control. So we have more control in Facebook now, thank goodness. I'm going to show you on some of the other networks it's not quite as nice at all. So here is LinkedIn. 
This is uh, as close to a landing page as you think. And I, what I did is I picked people that should know what they're doing. Tim Ash, uh, he's talking here at the show today, and he does know what he's doing. This is about as good as it gets. So at least he's got an offer in there, a nice high contrast item. People are likely to see it. But the call to action is recommend. And when you scroll down to the people that recommend, they get the links. So I'm going to go through and look at the recommendations. But if I say, wow, Tim's company looks awesome, I'm going to go and see these guys. So LinkedIn is not a very good platform for in on network conversion uh, landing pages. Scott Stratton, he's kind of a big deal and a not so big, not such a big deal. What did he say? I'm sorry, I've forgotten it. Uh, he's probably the most self-effacing person I know. Uh, but he knows Twitter. He has a lot of a big following, and he wrote the book, uh, book that talks about that a lot. Again, not much he can do with this. Not much he can do. He's done a great job of customizing his background. But this is our call to action. Click on this little link. So again, if I'm driving people to my Twitter page, it doesn't make a very good social media landing page. And I chose Chris Brogan, all things social, for my uh, Google Plus example. Uh, not much here that allows me to engage. If I go ahead and click on the About page, there are a list of links there, and they will bring me to an off-network landing page where he makes a couple offers uh, if you want him to see him speak or if you want to download this thing. So again, we've taken a bad situation as best we can, gone off-site, and uh, worked to get these conversions because subscribers and people who want him to speak move his business forward. We've distilled that out. Let's talk a little bit more about off-network uh, landing pages. So you get more control if it's on your site. You get to decide what's on the page, how it's displayed, what content management system you're using, what you show, what you don't show, any personalization, as Janet pointed out. Uh, nice advantages. However, there's a loss of scent. And this is why the advertisements that go from Facebook to a home page don't perform as well. There is a lack of continuity. So I'm in Facebook, it's blue, my friends are all around, and then suddenly I'm on this landing page. Uh, the disconnection will decrease your conversion rates. Obviously, better analytics. With Facebook, we can get good analytics in and out, but with most social networks, we're not going to be able to get those analytics, especially integrated all the way through to purchase. That's what we want. We want someone to click on a landing page and our analytics to tell us how many of those people actually bought. Traffic is only predictive. When people buy, that's definitive. When people sign up, that's definitive. When people subscribe, that's definitive. We want to measure that. Copyblogger, I think, does a good job of this, a really good job of this. And these guys should because they have the product, the landing page product premise. So you can see around here we've got the, the fire, the content. He shares these across the networks. Um, brings them to this page, and this is our distillation. So he has this offer to, to become a subscriber to his awesome content, and he also has ads for the products that uh, his company sells. And he socializes this through Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. I was able to find this particular story. So the content fires the network. The network delivers the vapor, the people who are probably well qualified, and then the landing page distills out the buyers and the subscribers. So getting a little taste, here's some examples of some social on-network social landing pages um, that use applications. And this is a really, we've, as, as Janet said, we're all kind of playing with this. Uh, this is a musical artist called Vina Tang. She uses the I Like application. So this is one you don't have to build yourself. You pop it in there. If I like a song, I'm taken to this page. I can complete the form and buy the song all right there in the application, on network example. So I consider email to be the, uh, the, the other social network. It actually is a very social network. My grandmother friended me years ago. She hasn't friended me on Facebook yet. I don't know what that's about. But the um, problem is social media posts have short lifespans. So when we're posting our content, this fire that we're building under the mash, uh, they go away very quickly. And with edge rank, we don't even know if they're showing up. If, if Facebook doesn't think we're important, is not even showing our posts in those things. Email subscribers are more committed because we're asking for their contact information. You can like all day. It's low commitment, and uh, the number I keep hearing is 90% only. 90% of the people who like your page will never go back to it. I think that's a little high. It's probably closer to 99%, unless you're doing a good job with content to get them back to the page. Uh, email is an asset, so if I build my marketing platform 
in the social networks, and then Mark Zuckerberg decides to change his privacy policy to something that I wasn't following and takes them all away, they're gone. Email is my, own, my asset. It's something I can use to build relationships, and no one can take it away except maybe a hacker. And, of course, email increases searches. Um, people will see it in their inbox, uh, go about their business, and come back and search later. Well, this, fan, this handsome guy here is sitting in an application, and this is an example of, of another hybrid. So this is a custom tab in Facebook that I did. In this case, I thought the video was more important, so I don't have a big red arrow pointing up at like. Uh, I'll let him like a little bit later. I want him to watch the video, which talks about, which teases actually a, an educational video, which I'm giving away for free. So if they click uh, go here to get the video, they're asked for permission. So what this does is it allows us to convert, to distill leads out of Facebook without them having to complete a form. Okay? In this case, all I'm asking for is ask access to basic information um, and uh, to write the right to send an email. So I'm not asking to post to their wall or anything like that. Your application, if it has the level of value, can ask to do those things, and that's a very powerful source of content. So if they click allow, they're added to my house list, and I can follow up with some uh, email to begin building that relationship to email. My conversion rates through email are far, far higher than they are through social media. So this is, this is how I move my business forward. And of course, when they like, they get the promised value. This is a 40-minute educational um, video. Um, I hope to have some data for you about how this pipeline is working, but I'm able to measure this all the way through to completion through Google Analytics primarily, and it's nice to have that all in one dashboard. So to summarize, you want to create relevant content. This is the fire underneath your social networks. You want to develop social landing pages that work for you, so pages that get them to do something to move your business forward. As George said, choose the right landing pages, right? And in the case of uh, social media, you're going to have to go in and engineer some of these things specifically for that channel. Uh, keep friends and fans in the network when possible. Keep your content pointing to landing pages in the network. And convert the likes, um, convert to email because email is a, a higher commitment and um, a higher converting channel for most of us. And I hope that you will uh, join me on my social media. Thanks. <laughs>